It comes as no surprise that in a series literally called House of the Dragon, the Greens and their perceived lack of Targaryenness makes their popularity pale in comparison to the true blue Valyrian dragons like Rhaenyra and Daemon, who populate the side of the Blacks. However, while the Hightowers are sort of positioned as the antagonists to the Targaryen protagonists, they are actually one of the most fascinating houses in Westeros and in the world of Ice and Fire in their own right. House Hightower has barely gotten any attention in the mainline story of A Song of Ice and Fire, and they didn't even warrant more than a passing nod in Game of Thrones. But the history of this house and their importance to Westeros overall is so great that it's almost hard to grasp. And it is interesting that they ultimately faced off against the Targaryens in the Dance of the Dragons. Because in many ways, they are pretty clear foils to the Targaryens and their dynasty in Westeros. House Hightower is the most powerful house in what was the largest and most powerful city in Westeros, Old Town, for the vast majority of human history on the continent. And although King's Landing became a central focus of Westerosi politics when the Targaryens arrived, the power and influence of Old Town, as well as the Hightowers themselves, throughout Westerosi history is hard to overstate. Unlike many of the big-name great houses, like the Lannisters and Starks, that were established during the Age of Heroes in Westeros, House Hightower began building its power in Old Town in the Dawn Age, which not only came before the Age of Heroes, but was before the recorded history of Westeros itself. It's possible that House Hightower has been a force in Westeros for up to 12,000 years. But regardless of the specificities, they have been a significant political power in the central hub of Westeros since humans existed in Westeros, period. The actual High Tower that the High Towers dominated Old Town from is almost as ancient, legendary, and mysterious as the High Towers themselves. The High Tower is the tallest structure in the Seven Kingdoms, and according to legend, Uthor of the High Tower supposedly commissioned Brandon the Builder, aka the OG of House Stark, to build the High Tower itself. But the black stone foundation that the High Tower was built on is even more interesting. Weird kinds of black stone is a bit of a running theme within the world of Ice and Fire. And the foundation of the High Tower is made of a kind of fused black stone of unknown origin that bears some resemblance to Valyrian stone. Except, the Fort of House High Tower likely predates the Valyrian freehold and civilization itself. Interestingly, another, and similarly seemingly ancient iteration of this fused black stone is also found in the Five Forts of Yi Ti which is almost as far from Old Town as the map of the known world goes. In yet another bizarre quasi-Valyrian connection, the appearance of the High Towers themselves seems to be somewhat similar to the Valyrians, as they are described as often having golden and silver hair. And although this is just a wild guess, it seems somewhat believable that the Valyrians and whatever the High Towers are may share a common ancestor. Given the proliferation of the fused black stone in Valyria, Old Town, and Yi Ti, it's plausible that this knowledge all comes from the same point of origin, namely the Great Empire of the Dawn, the civilization that existed in Yi Ti before it actually became Yi Ti. However, their looks and theoretical origin are where the similarities between the Valyrians and the High Towers seem to end. Interestingly, the High Towers have been somewhat of the anti Targaryens throughout the history of Westeros, because despite their outrageous wealth and incredible power, their strategy for growth and survival seems to be almost the opposite of the Targaryens. One of the biggest reasons why House Hightower has managed to maintain such a position in Westeros for the entirety of Westerosi history is that they tend to integrate and assimilate rather than conquer. They have survived the Andal invasion, the Targaryen conquest, and every single other major change and upheaval in Westeros because of their ability to go with the flow and align themselves with the most powerful people and the winning teams. And interestingly, despite their position, the closest they have ever come to actually outwardly and aggressively grasping for power was during the Dance of the Dragons, when the leaders of the Greens were High Towers themselves. For the most part, they have distinctively avoided being at the forefront of leadership, at first for the Reach when it was its own kingdom, and in all of Westeros once the Targaryens conquered the kingdoms. Despite the fact that they were the leading house in the most powerful city in Westeros, they seemed to be more than content to let the Gardeners and then the Tyrells be the face of Reacher politics. 
And their overall socio-political strategy really reflects this apparent desire to never appear to be the most powerful family in the Reach or in all of Westeros, despite the fact that in many ways, they are and almost always have been. Their integration into the history of Westeros and the story at large is also fascinating for everything that it does and doesn't tell the audience about their house. Again, they have ancient connections with families like the Starks. They became a massive force in the Targaryen dynasty during the Dance of the Dragons. And while they are never at the forefront of the story in A Song of Ice and Fire, they are very intentionally interwoven into a great deal of important family trees and character arcs in the story. For instance, Although Game of Thrones omitted it, Marjorie Tyrell's mother and the current Lady of Highgarden is actually Allery Hightower. Lyness Hightower, one of the younger children of the current Lord Leighton Hightower, is in fact the wife of none other than Jorah Mormont. Sir Jorah was actually busted for selling poachers into slavery and exiled because he was attempting to fund the life that his Hightower wife was accustomed to. Meaning that this marriage is in large part indirectly responsible for Daenerys Targaryen's entire character arc. And while Leighton Hightower has been a conspicuously absent part of A Song of Ice and Fire, his absence actually seems to be quite meaningful. Like many of the ancient houses in Westeros, there are rumors that the Hightowers are in possession of some kind of ancient magic. Allegedly, they have practiced unnatural arts like alchemy and even necromancy. And while rumors like these should always be taken with a grain of salt, given what we've seen with magical families like the Starks and the Targaryens, and given what has been done to reanimated seemingly dead characters like the Mountain, clearly these theories should not be written off completely either. Which again, brings us back to Lord Leighton Hightower, the Lord during A Song of Ice and Fire, who appears to be up to something secretive and weird and probably magical. Interestingly, Despite the fact that Westeros has been ripped apart by civil wars on nearly every end, Lord Leighton hasn't even left the High Tower in supposedly over a decade. He and his daughter Melora, colloquially known as the Mad Maid, have essentially ignored the goings-on of Westerosi politics during this outrageous upheaval because they need to stay in the High Tower and allegedly research some sort of magical stuff. The ruling lord of the ancient massive city of Old Town has brushed off the War of the Five Kings because he has more important things to do. And given that we all know that an ice invasion and fire invasion is coming, it's not hard to believe that Leighton and Melora are onto something. And if their super secret activities actually do involve either of these major magical events, then it's definitely worth paying attention to the fact that they apparently knew, figured out, or somehow discovered that these things were happening more than a decade before anyone else seemingly caught wind of it. So all of this ultimately goes to say that House Hightower should not be underestimated or written off, and their role in Fire and Blood, House of the Dragon, and the Dance of the Dragons is absolutely fascinating, and House of the Dragon hasn't even scratched the surface of their personal history or importance to Westeros as a whole. It's very interesting that Alicent's marriage to Viserys is seen as an overreach on Otto Hightower's part. And it's even more interesting that Alicent's children are at least partially seen as unworthy of the Iron Throne, or seen as not real Targaryens because they're not Targaryen and Valyrian enough. Sure, they are not as Valyrian as the Blacks, but House Hightower is truly the essence of Westeros in nearly every way. And ironically, one of Viserys and House Targaryen's biggest missteps was not taking advantage of how much influence and power a marriage with House Hightower could really grant them. Again, House Hightower are set up as foils to House Targaryen in many ways. But one of the most vital elements of that is pushed to center stage during the Dance of the Dragons. Because the fact that the Hightowers are able to mount an offense against the Blacks at all is incredibly impressive, and goes to show how much power and sway they really hold. House of the Dragon has only vaguely alluded to this, but because House Hightower has been the center of Old Town politics since Old Town existed, the power that they can exert is astonishing, even in the Targaryen era. For instance, many viewers took note of the fact that Alicent seemed to have a religious awakening towards the end of season one of the series, but they likely misunderstood the true meaning behind Alicent's actions. House Hightower is above all a politically adept house, and the Faith of the Seven is not only the most popular religion in Westeros, but it is based in Old Town and has extremely deep ties to the Hightowers, who embrace them during the time of the Andal invasion. One of the fundamental flaws of the Targaryens has always been their belief in their own superiority and their unwillingness to integrate into Westerosi culture. 
So Allison's very visible devotion to the faith is simply her using one of the most powerful cards she has to play. That's not to say that her piety is entirely fake. But the outward display of her connection to the faith is incredibly intentional and quite politically savvy. In order to distinguish herself from her rivals, she and House Hightower in general are demonstrating how innately Westerosi they are by exploiting their incredibly deep connection to one of the most powerful and broadly influential forces on the entire continent. In addition, she and the rest of the Hightowers are signaling that unlike the Blacks, they are willing to advance the cause of the faith in addition to advancing themselves, which will obviously offer them an unimaginable amount of potential support from the common people. Similarly, Rhaenyra has a moment of obvious dismissiveness towards the Maesters when Alicent asks for their help in treating Viserys, but the show doesn't ever explain why. Once again, this is one of the great examples of House Hightower's power, influence, and the way in which they represent broader Westerosi culture in contrast to House Targaryen's Valyrian heritage. Because the Maesters are also one of the most powerful forces in all of Westeros, and they are also inextricably linked to Old Town and House Hightower. Therefore, Rhaenyra's dislike of the Maesters stems from the fact that they are simply one more building block of the power of her rivals, and she likely recognizes that Alicent is also working to solidify House Hightower's connection to the Citadel and the Maesters in the event that a civil war erupts between Rhaenyra's family and Alicent's. It's not as if the Hightowers and the Maesters or the Faith are one and the same. But when you consider the fact that the Maesters and or the Faith of the Seven have influence on nearly every person in Westeros, in some form or another, the fact that they are so inextricably linked to House Hightower is a massive boon in the Greens' favor. And that's not even to mention all of the other political and familial connections that the Hightowers have in the rest of Westeros. Again, their strategy for surviving and thriving has been to consistently integrate and assimilate with whatever cultural and social changes have come to Westeros, and their political acumen has allowed them to maintain a position of outrageous power since the literal beginning of civilization on their continent. Despite their almost mythic origin and their alleged magical abilities, House Hightower has always primarily relied on political maneuvering for their successes making them a fantastic contrast to the martially-minded Targaryens. Although the Targaryens will always have a starring role in the stories of Ice and Fire, and House of the Dragon is clearly doing nothing to change that, House Hightower is one of the most interesting facets of Westerosi history and politics that gets almost no attention. Clearly, their strategy relies on staying under the radar despite being perennial powerhouses. But that's also why they're the coolest house in the Seven Kingdoms that no one actually knows about. But what do you think? Is House Hightower low-key legendary in the world of Westeros? Leave your comments and opinions below. And if you're interested in more content like this, like and subscribe.